All right, good Monday, or no, so where are we? Wednesday? Yeah, somewhere in there. Okay, Wednesday evening, I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Anna coming to you live from downtown Chattanooga, Tennessee. It is, a, again, a dry and very comfortable evening out there, and the next day or so should be decently quiet before we see a return to maybe some more problematic type weather coming through late Wednesday into early on, or late Saturday into early, late Friday into early Saturday. Really, I'll get this straight. I haven't had enough caffeine today, unfortunately. It is, again, going to be seeing the potential of that coming our way, which is going to be the main focus of what we're going to be talking about for later on the into the next couple of days. Not doing too bad on the temperatures as we go throughout the second full week of spring. We'll take a look at the seven-day forecast coming up here in just a little bit. Got the West Shore home weather window picture of the day for you, and we're going to take a look again and see what's going to be going coming our way in the semi-near future, so stay tuned for more on that. Questions, concerns, email me at aonic at wdef.com, and also don't forget you can find out more about what's going on with the weather on our website at wdef.com slash weather. Chip Chapman will have your forecast bright and early tomorrow morning, so stay tuned for more on that. Currently dry and a very quiet evening in progress. Not often that we can see the lights of Signal Mountain out there on the horizon, so we can get a decent clear sky for tonight. Uh, very quiet and again very dry for much of the area. Hopefully going to be staying that way into the rest of the forecast. Temperatures as of the time we record this back in the mid to upper 50s and seeing again some very calm conditions. Much less windy than what it was about 24 hours ago as we see high pressure across much of the entire area. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Our West Shore home weather window picture of the day from Debbie Goines taking a look around the Chickamauga and Chattanooga National National Military Park, the Wilder Brigade Monument. Uh, again, it's on the Chickamauga Battlefield area. If you'd like to see, again, more about that, we'll post these to our social media pages coming up a little bit later. And thanks to everybody for sending in some excellent pictures over the last several days, weeks, and months since I've been here. Some spectacular photography. If you've got pictures, weather pictures from around the area, we would love to see them and show them. So you can drop them to any of our social media pages. Uh, again, give us, if you want to, if you want to remain anonymous, that's fine. Name, location, what you were taking a picture of. I'm still learning, again, just locations around here. So uh, if you have anything like a short description like that that we can include, that'd be great. And we, again, wind up posting all these pictures to our social media accounts so you can see them up close and personal and not just on a couple of newscasts. So great opportunity to be able to send that in. And please keep sending them in. We would love to see a little bit more out there of your pictures over the next several days and weeks and months. Heading out to sink a few putts tomorrow. It doesn't look too bad. A little bit on the breezy side, although not much. Winds out of the north. They'll be switching around to the southeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Could be a little frosty in the morning. And we do have, again, that frost advisory for tonight for parts of the viewing area. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Let's take a look and see what's going on right now. Again, for the time being, high pressure well across the southeastern United States. So we don't have, again, a lot happening for the time being. We will see that potential of some more problems where it comes to uh, chances of rain coming on through. This front to our north is actually going to be propelled back to the north as a warm front. Air around high pressure rotates clockwise, so as this goes north, we'll see more clouds and we'll see some warmer temperatures slowly, and we'll see the fuel necessary for these storms coming on through. We're also going to be looking again back toward the west coast as this next storm system gets a little closer to us. This is the one that has been hovering off the west coast for just the last couple of days as it has it's been picking up again a decent amount of energy as these systems go across the portions of the rockies we start off with again a big swirl of energy here right off the coast this is slated to move across the country in the next couple of days as it goes up over the rockies gets kind of compressed in the upper levels of the lower atmosphere but once it heads over the rockies and down into the plain states this thing is going to get a lot of room to maneuver. This is what we've been talking about for the last couple of days, and we see that potential for stronger weather coming our direction. Let's go ahead and time things out for you, give you a forecast estimate as to what's going on. By bus stop time tomorrow morning, chilly, 
some patchy frost possible but otherwise not doing too bad out there for the rest of the afternoon looks like a beautiful thursday coming up with temperatures pushing 70 degrees by the time the kids get out of school uh, very clear out there a few clouds and that's going to be about it by early friday morning we see more cloud cover coming on through uh, the computer models have really shrunk the amount of rainfall that we may see so maybe a shower or two up toward I-40, but that's really going to be about it. Most of the rest of the day outside of a passing shower, maybe a rumble of thunder and some very mild temperatures before those showers move through. Should be relatively quiet. Would not count out the possibility of a few rumbles of thunder in there. But as we get closer to late Friday, early Saturday, that's where we see this line of storms developing back to our west. Now, what we're seeing doesn't look quite as bad as what we saw a week ago, Friday into Saturday, but there is still that potential of getting the showers and thunderstorms developing way out this direction. And then anything that forms ahead of this line, that's where the most nasty weather is more than likely going to wind up. So we could see again that potential out there going into the next couple of days again toward the weekend. That'll be the best chance coming on through. We'll see that line approach the midpoint of the area right around Chattanooga and parts of the river valley down from the Cumberland Plateau into just before sunrise on Saturday. And then most of the activity should be gone after dawn patrol and probably could fire up farther on over to the east as we get into and around the early morning hours post sunrise into Saturday. That'll take care of that moving it on out of the picture. Keep in mind what you just saw was very preliminary and the models will update several times in the next 24 to 36 hours and that'll give us a better handle as to what we're going to be looking for. Now the chances of severe weather for right now, nothing expected for tonight. As we get into tomorrow, the severe weather threat starts to materialize as we go back to the west of us, way to the west of us around Oklahoma, and then as we get into around Friday, Friday afternoon and evening, well to our west. This is where we are seeing a very large enhanced area of severe weather. The scale up here at the top, the pale green is just again generic thunderstorms. You start getting into a marginal threat in the dark green, higher amounts in the slight risk category, and then you get up to the enhanced level. Now by this time last week, we were seeing an enhanced threat as well for the area down around that got clobbered the worst around parts of northern and central Mississippi. We are not seeing a moderate threat here. Possibility that we may see more of that back to the northwest of us as we get into tomorrow. This is going to start off back to the west early during Friday and then head our direction. The question is again how much of this gets over here and remains decently energized. If we get a decent amount of rain ahead of the main line of storms, that cooling effect of the rainfall coming down might sap some of the strength from the more powerful storms. And that's good news for us because we won't see quite as much coming our way. That appears to be the way it's looking for right now. But Little Rock, St. Louis, Jefferson City, Missouri, Chicago, back to western Kentucky and areas of western areas of Tennessee, Mississippi, a small portion of northwestern Alabama. That's going to be the worst of the worst. And if you're traveling in or through or back to the west of Middle Tennessee or areas of northern Mississippi through northwestern Alabama, this needs to be watched very carefully. And again, this will change. The forecast update for this will be coming out in the next few hours. We'll bring that to you on our social media pages. And Chip Chapman will be bringing you more on that very early tomorrow morning. This is why we tell you about this, to make certain you know that there is a potential of problems heading our way, to make certain you can prepare for that and get ready for it. You need to, these days, especially at this time of the year, this is prime time for severe weather around this area of the country. So we need to watch this very carefully. The next biggest time we will see is during hurricane season when leftover storms can head up this way. So for right now, this is the way it looks, the worst of the worst, well to our west, but we still see again, late Friday, early Saturday, that potential of maybe some problems coming our direction. So again, please stay tuned to News 12. We'll have more on that coming up a little bit later. What exactly are we looking for for effects at this time? Right now with that slight risk category, 
and according to the National Weather Services around the area for what we're going to be seeing here, the main threat is going to be the possibility of damaging thunderstorm winds, 55 miles per hour plus. It's still a non-zero threat of tornadoes as per usual. There seems to be a lesser threat of hail for right now, even though as the storm system swings through the country, there's a lot of cold air upstairs, which means there could be a better than average chance of picking up larger hailstones out of this system. But for right now, and we're focusing again, just this is for our area, not for back this direction. So what we will see is lesser chances of large hail, lesser chances of tornadoes, maybe a little bit more in the way of flooding. We'll see what the next 24 hours brings us in the forecast. But for right now, the primary threat is going to be for damaging thunderstorm winds. So that is something that we're going to need to keep a close eye on to see what that brings our direction. So could we see lesser severe weather in the next forecast? Yes. Could this enhanced area spill over our direction? Yes. A lot of things could happen. This is why we want you to stay weather aware so you can keep up to date with what's going on across the area when it comes to the possibility of what these things, again, may happen. The potential of what they can do is the danger. The danger also is making certain that you pay attention to what is going on. The available energy in the atmosphere, this is something that you can find online, and we're putting on the graphics here to show a little bit more about where the potential target is going to be. And for right now, going back way back to our northwest, that's where we'll see more activity toward Friday morning. And then we start to see more potential heading our direction. But by the time we get into and around late Friday, early Saturday morning, there is a smaller chance of the amount of energy that can develop into severe thunderstorms and tornadic weather. So northeastern Alabama, once again, that's going to be the best potential, but we're not looking at a lot for now. Again, that could change the closer we get uh, to the event. So we'll be watching how much energy this system pulls along with it. And then toward about Dawn Patrol Saturday, everything leaves the area and heads on through. There is the possibility of seeing some breezy mountain winds out of this. We don't have a specific forecast for that right now, but we will be watching that uh, again, with a lot of interest over the course of the rest of the evening. Seven-day forecast. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what's in our immediate future. And we will see, again, the potential for uh, some those storms coming on through Friday night and Saturday. Thursday looks excellent. I don't see a problem tomorrow at all with numbers back in the lower 70s. And then staying dry into the weekend post-severe weather event there. Next week, a chance of some showers maybe some thunderstorms coming on through temperatures scraping close to 80 degrees we've had a very mild start to springtime so far and it looks like we're not jumping right ahead into summertime which is just fine by me uh, back in memphis it seemed like the springtime we had was just that quick so it's nice to see kind of an extended springtime for us here in this area of the country showers monday evening through about tuesday maybe a few thunderstorms there and then possibly some showers coming up on Wednesday, drying out a little bit toward next week, Thursday or so. But that's in the fairly distant future for now. This is what we really have to concentrate on to make certain that we are primed, ready to protect ourselves from severe weather. And to make certain, again, that you know your plan, you have a plan. Winging it is not a plan. So again, knowing where to go to to protect yourself from these storms, that's going to be one of the best things that you can possibly do, uh, getting ready ahead of time to make certain that you are where you need to be and how you can get there in a very short amount of time. The less time you have to spend thinking and debating and deciding which direction would be best, left, right, downstairs, bathroom, over in the cabinet, wherever, that's something you want to really consider. And this is something that we talk about when we go out to the schools that we talk to, uh, if you want to go and protect yourself, if you think about a tic-tac-toe board, the person who's in the center part usually wins the game and because they command that center portion of the field. You want to avoid any outside walls because debris can smash right through that very easily. If it's going fast enough, whether it's a tiny little uh, screw or a large 2 by 4 or a car, again, you want to be in the areas that are shaded here in green, that'll protect you the most because you used to have, you got the rest of the house again, or structure 
surrounding you. A long time ago, way back in Topeka, Kansas, for the 1966 tornado, the meteorologists and engineers noted that a lot of people had the, the glass walkout basements on the southwestern side. So in the mid to late 70s, late 60s, somewhere in there, the idea changed to say, oh, well, if the tornado strikes from this direction, then you want to be over here in the northeast corner because that'll be a longer direction to travel. But the trouble is you're still on that exposed area right there, and you could have a walkout basement of some sort or exposed area there. That's when we started thinking, again, the best part for you is right smack in the center part of wherever you happen to be. And then it's your job to make certain that you know where to go to on stuff like this. And that's what I tell the students that I go to. The assignment that I give them is, with their teacher's permission, is that tonight, if you don't know where to protect yourself, you need to go home and debate with your folks or whomever you're with to make certain that you know what's going on when it comes to severe weather safety. Because you want to be able to get there as soon as possible without any debate and losing time. Because when a warning is issued, you could have five minutes you could have five seconds. You need to be able to get there as soon as possible and protect yourself. So again, the interior portion here will be your best bet. Lowest floor of whatever building you happen to be on. And yes, I know that a lot of places do not have uh, a basement. That's going to be the A number one best place for you below ground, if at all possible. But if you don't have a basement, again, lowest floor of wherever you happen to be, closest to the ground, second, third, anything higher up is not a good idea because the winds blowing the debris past will be able to go faster, higher up without anything blocking their path. And when you're on the second plus floor, that's not where you want to be. Down below, where again debris is flying over you, if you're down here protected by the earth and the building structure and things like that, you're going to be a lot better off down here than you are higher up. So go low, stay low until the warning is over with, and again avoid anything in the way of outside. A bathroom is a very good place to be because if you go to like a bathtub, you can get in there and then cover over yourself with a mattress, a quilt, something like that. That'll come in very handy right there. So keep those available for yourself. And that, again, is a good opportunity to make certain that you are protecting yourself no matter what happens and when, when these systems roll on through. Making certain you got things also ready to go when it comes to severe weather protection uh, before anything happens, having multiple ways to get uh, warnings, making certain that you don't just use the National Weather Service radio, although that's a good idea, uh, making certain your cell phone is set up to get uh, warnings and information to make certain you're more protected on things of that nature, making certain that you have, again, everything in the way of like a uh, clothes, car keys, medication, cash, spare batteries, chargers, identification, important papers if you need to take that with you. Uh, before, during, or afterwards. Again, if you're stuck in place, shelter in place, but if there's a possibility, especially in a mobile home, that you can get to someplace more sturdy, a mobile home park, uh, community shelter, a sturdier building someplace else well before the storm moves into a particular area, that's where you want to go, and that's where you want to make certain, uh, again, that you're safe out there to make certain that everything is ready to go beforehand. In amateur radio operators, uh, law enforcement call it a go bag. Uh, it's a good opportunity to, again, have your stuff in order so you can pick up and go. And that helps you, again, stay prepared for these situations and make certain that you have uh, everything taken care of and ready before you walk out the door. So, again, something to think about there. Please remember also get yourself one of these. Weather Radio, a good opportunity to learn more about what goes on with the weather, and you can program it. And if you don't know how to program it, we can help you do that at WDEF.com slash weather. Be glad to let you know a little bit more about that. Uh, again, one of these are life-saving pieces of equipment. Get one, have it ready to go, get the battery back up on there, good opportunity to help. If there's a junction on the back back here, so if you know anybody who is deaf or hard of hearing, that is something that they can connect to like a flasher or like a buzzing system when they're asleep, and this will help to wake people up, even people who might be deaf or hard of hearing. So that is something to consider uh, just to be on the safe side out there and make certain that all that is uh, taken care of and ready to go for you. Again, through tonight and into tomorrow, not looking at too much of a major problem. Uh, looking good, actually, for the most part, all the way on through. But as we go into around uh, the next several days, we could be seeing, again, that potential for 
more problems heading our way with that potential of severe weather out there. We'll be posting this to our social media pages coming up here relatively soon. Uh, didn't have any guests drop by for tonight, so uh, if you're watching this later on, thanks for dropping by. We'll always be posting this to our website, wdef.com slash weather. And, of course, we'll be doing a lot more with our online systems and presence coming up, so stay tuned for a lot more when it comes to astronomy, the environment, all kinds of other stuff, and we'll bring that to you, again, through our social media pages, but you can always access the details available at wdef.com slash weather. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik. Again, a onik at wdef.com if you want to email me there. Chip Chapman has your forecast on the morning show, Thursday morning, starting bright and early at 5 a.m. Eastern. And we'll have more coming up later on tomorrow. Stay tuned because this information in regards to the severe weather threats, need to pay attention to this. And the information tomorrow could be much different than what I'm giving to you tonight. So, again, please make certain you're staying tuned uh, as for your own safety and for your own protection. Keeping an eye as to what's coming our direction is paramount. Being weather aware is not just a catchphrase. It means a lot. And if you stay weather aware, you're going to be much more informed than other people who don't pay attention to the forecast. So we'll help you do that here. Stay tuned for more with News 12 on air and online. And thanks for joining us for the live edition of Weather Overtime for Wednesday evening.